Hello everyone, this is Sherwin here from TechOS and today I'm going to be taking a look at using Siri on macOS Sierra. Now Apple have added Siri with the latest major release of macOS and Siri is able to carry out all of the traditional commands which we're all used to on iOS but can also perform tasks specific to the Mac experience which I'll go through later on in the video. Firstly though I'm going to go through the Siri preferences which you can access by simply going up to the top left corner of your screen clicking on the Apple icon and then going down to System Preferences and then from here if you just go ahead and click Siri you'll access the Siri Preferences section. Now when you first upgrade to macOS Sierra or set up a Mac running macOS Sierra you may or may not have enabled Siri during that process. If you need to enable Siri then you can do so by clicking on the tick box over here but I've already done that so there's no need to do it at the moment. First choose the language that you want Siri to speak in. So as you can see here, I've got English. Then you can choose your Siri voice. So you can choose from all the different various accents which you can have uh, that are available for that language. Then you can choose to have voice feedback turned on or off. So if you have it on, Siri will speak back to you. So as well as displaying what Siri has to say on the screen, it will also talk to you through your Mac speakers. However, if you're working in a quiet environment or you just prefer to read what Siri has to say instead of speak it, then you can turn voice feedback off and it, Siri won't actually talk to you. Next, you can choose your microphone input. So if you want to have a different microphone uh, that Siri can listen to you through, then you can choose that through there. And you can choose what keyboard shortcut you want to use to activate Siri. If you want to be able to activate Siri in the most natural way without having to click on anything, now I've chosen hold command space because pressing command and space will bring up spotlight search. And I think because Siri and spotlight search are sort of similar functions of your Mac, it makes sense to me to have um, them assigned to the similar sort of keys. But you can choose anything you like. If you'd like something that isn't one of the preset options, so any of these, then what you can do is you can go to where it says customize and you can choose your own keys. So what you do is just press them down simultaneously and those will be the keys which you can use to activate Siri. So you'll just have to press those and Siri will become activated. Now one thing I will say if you're going to do this, however, is not to choose common commands such as command C, command S, command P etc. As you may know that these are actually universal shortcuts on the Mac for copying, saving and printing respectively. So make sure that the keys you choose don't clash with any other commands from other applications which you may use. If you want tips on keys which you can use which probably won't clash with other applications that you use then choose key combinations with the option control or function keys. Try to avoid command because command is generally used by a lot of applications. So if you want you can also choose down here whether you want to show Siri in the menu bar. So at the top here you can see I've got Siri in the menu bar and that's basically another way of, of activating Siri. So if you don't want to have that there keep your menu bar nice and clean then you can choose to untick that, it'll disappear and then you can have it back if you want to. So I'm just going to go out of the preferences and I just want to talk to you about one final thing regarding setting up your Siri experience and that's the dock icon. You may have noticed down here when you upgrade to Mac OS Sierra uh, that you've now got this new Siri icon. Now that is there to provide one way of activating Siri so you can just click on it and Siri gets activated like just like that. So that's a way of activating Siri if you don't want to have to use the keyboard shortcuts or use the item in menu bar. However, if you want to keep your dock clean and minimalistic, then what you can do is remove it. Now, it's very simple. All you have to do is go to the icon, click and drag it away from the dock and you'll get a nice sound effect. There you go. So that's how you can get rid of Siri from the dock. Now, if you want Siri to come back, what you can do is if you hit command and space at the same time, or you can go up to the spotlight icon up here then in the top right what you can do is you can just type in Siri and get the first search results at the top here just Siri as an application just click and drag Siri down to your dock wherever you want it and Siri will be there so that's how you can set up the activation of Siri so now we've got this set up and you know how to activate him or her I'm just going to show you some of the commands which you can tell Siri to complete so I'm just going to start with the ones you'll be familiar with if you've used Siri on an iOS device before. So to activate Siri, I'm going to use my keyboard shortcut. So for me, I chose hold command and space. So if I just do that now and I'll go through some of the commands which you can ask Siri. Make the screen dimmer. OK, this is as dark as it gets. Turn the volume down. 
Is Bluetooth on? Yes, Bluetooth is on. What song is playing? Open the web page google.co.uk. Tweet. Okay, what would you like to say? Enjoying using Siri or Mac OS Sierra exclamation mark. Here's your tweet. Ready to send it? So those are the ones that you may be familiar with if you use Siri on iOS. Now I'm just going to show you just a few of the exa of examples of commands you can use which are unique to the macOS experience. How fast is my Mac? Your Mac has a 2.8 GHz Intel Core i5 processor. How much free space do I have? You have 896.19 GB storage available. Documents I was working on yesterday. Here are all of the documents that were modified yesterday. Show me my PDFs in iCloud. Here are all of the PDFs in your iCloud drive. So hopefully you found that helpful in getting used to how Siri can be used in Mac OS Sierra. Siri is great to finally have on the Mac. He's very helpful for me. And I find that I'm using Siri a lot more now that I've got it on the Mac. Because I tend to sit in front of the Mac a lot. And it's nice to have Siri to be able to perform common tasks such as searches for on your local disk and on the web and just to use Siri to perform tasks within applications. But anyway, that's it for this video. If you've got any questions or comments on using Siri or you're having trouble setting Siri up or you want just some extra general tech advice for your Apple devices, do get in contact with me using the details that are in the description of this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and you can subscribe by hitting that logo, which is going to be up on the screen in, in a minute. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.